Hi, welcome replay viewers. Welcome live viewers to the broadcast. So this is Janice Temple and we are headed. Hi, Kara WMK, welcome. Welcome. Hi everybody, so my name is Janice Temple and I'm the founder of World Black History on Periscope and we are heading to the Carter G. Woodson Library today and to see the Vivian Harsh collection and I will explain more. So we are in Chicago. Let's back around. So these are the streets of Chicago and uh, we're heading to the library. Hi, Mabel. Hi, Mabel. How are you? Welcome. So we are driving in Chicago. Hey, Danya. Hey, how are you doing, Danya? So this is the former church of President Obama and his family. Hey, incredibly me incredibly me welcome hey Monique how's everything going so I'm just showing you guys the city streets of Chicago we're headed toward the um, hi Duranus we're headed toward the Woodson Carter G Woodson library and the Vivian Harsh collection Hi Janice, I'm doing fine. Awesome, Monique. Awesome. It's good to see you. So you so you get to see some of Chicago through me. <laughs> so how is everybody doing today? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. And you, Monique? Danya, thanks for being on. I appreciate you. Appreciate you. You may be here in July in Chicago. Awesome. That is awesome. Yeah, the summertime is the best time to come. Hi, Robbie Tanner. Welcome. Welcome, welcome. Hi, Advance. Helping kids rise. Very awesome. Much love, Queen. Much love to you too, Danya. The blunt god? Really? Chirac? Uh, no. Well... <laughs> We're going to the library, but okay. <laughs> so this is the library right here. This is the Carter G. Woodson Library right there. That's the Carter G. Woodson Library. And um, <laughs> this is uh, Vivian just for a week to a uh, AM event. What does that mean? So this is the library right here. And that's the garden in in her honor. And we're gonna go and take you all around. So here's the thing. Everybody that's um I'm gonna block you. Okay. So block that person, um, the blunt guy. He's gone. All right, so my name is Janice Temple. If you're new to me, you can um, click and follow us. I'm the founder of World Black History on Periscope, and we're coming to the Carter G. Woodson. Yeah, just block him, Danya. I just got rid of him. We're coming to the Carter G. Woodson Library um, because, well, Carter G. Woodson is the founder of uh, Negro History Week, which turned into Black History Month. And it was founded here in Chicago. Did you guys know that he came to Chicago to start to start it? Um, so they had an expo, I think, somewhere in Bronzeville for about two or three weeks. He and some of uh, his uh, frat brothers. And then they started Negro History Week. So, um, so this is the library. Is there parking? Down okay. There. All right. Well, I'm gonna get out. So I'm gonna take you guys and show you the library. This is in Chicago. Hi, Gina. So first, I'm gonna give you guys a little background. So you see the scaffolding here? 
I was in Boston and I read in the newspaper, I think the Black Atlanta Star, that this scaffolding had been up for 14 years. No, it's it's near Beverly. It's near the Beverly area. Oh, hang on one second. Which is really a crime because they have built a new library in Chinatown and a new library in Beverly just up the street. But the one that's in the black neighborhood um, is falling down. They're, they're not repairing it. The front of this library is actually falling down. So I'm going to take you guys into the library and uh, I want to give you, I know, isn't that crazy? So. It's ridiculous because it is sad. I mean, um, you know, they have to find the money to fix this library because the Vivian Harsh collection is like rare books. It's an African American collection, and Carter G. Woodson started um, Black History Week and Month here. So. money into what they deem is important. Yeah, that's true. They do. They do. It's unfortunate. So, this is the Vivian G. Harsh Research Collection. And so this is a display that they have. Black Stars, African American Women, Scientists, and Inventors on her ground, Madam C.J. Walker. Oh, wow, I haven't heard of that one. Maya Angelou wouldn't take nothing for my journey now. Shirley Chisholm, unbought and unbossed. So that is awesome. Now this is a display in honor of Carter G. Woodson. And uh, A Life in Black History. That's a book by him. And let's see, so this photo, it says a committee in charge of the celebration of the 20th anniversary of the Association for the Study of Negro Life and History in 1935, wow. 20th anniversary of the organization's founding in Chicago. So the Association for the Study of Negro Life and History returned to the city of its birth for the annual ASNLH convention. It's taken in September 1935. So Carter G. Woodson and Vivian Harsh are seated at the left end of the table. Okay, so that's Carter G. Woodson and that's Vivian Harsh. <laughs> Thank you so much, Danya. So that's them. And this is Miss Education of the Negro by Carter G. Woodson. That's his famous book. And here is the annual report for the Association for the Study of Negro Life and History. So the organization is now located in Washington, D.C., which you see down at the bottom. And these notes, well, this report is, hi, Marta. This report is from July 1st, 1925 to June 30th, 1926. So that is historic. And so this is Carter G. Woodson. It says 1875 to 1950, a commemorative program to Carter G. Woodson founder of the Association for the Study of Negro Life and History, September 9th, 1915. Wow. 
It was no accident that Carter G. Woodson became the father of Negro history. He prepared carefully for the task that assumed that he assumed. From his home in Virginia, his pilgrimage of preparation took him to Berea College, the University of Chicago, Harvard University, the Sorbonne, to Asia and Africa. Isn't that phenomenal? Along the way, he taught in elementary and high schools and institutions of higher learning, such as the West Virginia State College and Howard University. Okay, let me get rid of this person. Okay, as a working scholar, Dr. Woodson was not only prolific, but scrupulous and unequivocal in his writings. His education of the Negro prior to 1861, 1919, has never been superseded or even challenged. His free Negro heads of family in the United States in 1830, published in 1925, was one of the first works to call attention to that neglected group. His The Negro and Our History, published in 1922, was the first standard work in the field with revisions by Dr. Charles H. Wesley, continues to enjoy wide usage. His African background outline, published in 1936, appeared long before the current scramble to study the dark continent known area of Negro life and history escaped his attention, whether it was the migration, the church, the professions, or the workers. Single-handedly, he wrote more than most of his successors combined. His most enduring work, however, is the institutions and activities he founded and promoted. In 1915, he and several friends established here in Chicago the Association for the Study of Negro Life and History. The following year, the Journal of Negro History appeared and is now one of the oldest learned journals in the United States. In 1921, he founded the Associated Publishers to publish worthy materials on Negroes that few of any commercials are willing to undertake at this time. In 1926, he launched Negro History Week to dramatize the omission of Negro Americans in the general study of American history. Thus, his monuments are many, and he built them all by himself. And here then, here's this book, Carter G. Woodson, Father of African American History. And here's another one. Quotations from Dr. Carter Godwin Woodson. Oh, so his middle name is Godwin. I didn't know that. Putting Pulse Racial to Rest, The Crisis. A century of striving from 1910 to today, our story continues. Lifting the standards for minorities in education. What will the Supreme Court do next? Wow, is that timely or what? So. Let's go inside now. And here are more books. Chicago's New Negroes, Darwin Baldwin, Modern, The Great Migration, and Black Urban Life. Hi, how are you doing, Alethea? The Negro in Illinois, Passionately Human, Wow, faith, I can do all things through Christ Jesus who strengthens me. The Black Chicago Renaissance. <laughs> oh yeah, kings. So this talks about the gangs in Chicago. Selling the urban race. The Chicago Renaissance and women's activism. Urban rage in Bronzeville. Wow. You love the miseducation? Hi, Big Dreamer. How are you? How are you doing? Deep title, Passionately Human. The Muse in Bronzeville. Yeah, these are some awesome books. So I'm going to show you over here. This is a portrait of Vivian Harsh. You're phenomenal. You are phenomenal, Big Dreamer. So that's a portrait of Vivian Harsh. So Vivian Harsh was the first black librarian in the city of Chicago. 
first black librarian in the city of Chicago. And this is Carter G. Woodson. Who is Carter G. Woodson? He was born in 1875 and he died in 1950. And Vivian Gordon Harsh, born in 1890 and died in 1960. I came to say hi and give a few hearts. Thank you, Alethea. Thanks for sharing. And this is Charlemagne Hill Rollins. She was a black librarian that helped build this collection, the Vivian Hodge collection as well. She was born in 1897 and died in 1979. And so this is what the uh, Vivian Hodge collection looks like. Your children love those histories. The exhibit that they have over here. Demonstrations from Chicago Congress of Racial Equity, Equality, sit in at the Board of Education. I am in the Carter G. Woodson Library in Chicago and uh, Negro History Week was founded in Chicago and so this library is named in his honor. Yes, Chicago. So this is a civil rights protest demanding the integration of Chicago public schools and the ouster of CPS Superintendent, Superintendent Benjamin Willis. Escalated in the summer of 1963, Willis was a frequent target of Commodore cartoons. Martin Luther King Jr. on open housing march to Marquette Park in 1966. During 1966, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. spent much of the year in Chicago, leading a broad coalition of Chicago civil rights groups and community organizations in demonstrations against Jim Crow and housing and against slum conditions in American, African-American neighborhoods. Someday you'll go to, to Utah Okay. Dr. King's work made a great impression on Chester Commodore and influenced his cartoons contents, Ben Burns papers. And so this is the Chicago Defender Weekly Housing Supplement. And this is for the opening of the Ida B. Wells homes, which are all gone now. They've torn them down. And this is dated October 26, 1940. And so these were the first homes that they opened for African Americans. Look at this one. The Burial of Fred Hampton. Wow. December 10, 1969. On December 4, 1969, Chicago police officers shot and killed Illinois Black Panther leaders party leaders Fred Hampton and Mark Clark in their West Side apartment as they slept in their beds. The pre-dawn raid ignited a storm of controversy and protest. The funeral held at the First Baptist Church in Melrose Park drew an overflow crowd which included Reverend Ralph Abernathy. This photo was taken by Leroy Bryant, Chester Commodore Papers, 672. Thank you for transmission. You're going to show these pearls to the children. Awesome. If Negro Mirren can carry guns for Uncle Sam, surely they can drive milk wagons for Bowman Dairy. Wow. Negro Labor Relations League. Picket line at Bowman's Dairy, Chicago, 1941. Chicago Whip Publisher. Joseph Bibb launched a campaign in 1930 with the slogan, Don't spend your money where you can't work. The newspaper urged Brownsville residents to boycott companies which refused to hire African Americans. Bowman's Dairy Soap milk door to door in black neighborhoods, yet maintained an all white workforce. This campaign finally broke the color barrier there 
Miriam Perkins was a strong supporter of such protests and participated in many of them. Timuel Black Papers, 872. So this library has rare um, photographs, newspapers. Um, it's a genealogy uh, research location. And so Timuel Black is a Chicago historian and his papers are here, his white papers are here. So you can come and you can search through um, the collections. John H. Johnson, awesome, with um, his staff holding um, Johnson Publishing copies. Okay, so this is John H. Johnson, the founder of Ebony Magazine, which is founded here in Chicago. So that's him. And then those are his staff members. So the publishing giant, John, uh, known as Johnson Publishing Company, had its origins in the world of Chicago Renaissance. Absolutely. With the coming of World War II, John H. Johnson, a bright young man whose mother had brought him to Chicago for his high school education, valedictorian of his class at DeSalvo High School, a University of Chicago student, an assistant to Harry Pace, the president of Supreme Life Insurance Company, got an idea. A Reader's Digest had focused on articles in various newspapers and magazines about race relations. Johnson thought that a regular magazine along these lines would have a market in the black community. Johnson raised the capital for the first issue with the help of his wife, Eunice, and with a $500 loan using his mother's new furniture as collateral. The first issue prepared by Johnson and his first collaborator, defender, writer Ben Burns, featured articles by Langston Hughes, Roland Hayes, Horace Mann Bond, and Walter White. By 1945, Johnson planned a picture magazine for African Americans comparable to life. It turned out to be Ebony, the flagship of his company. Delayed until November 1945 when wartime paper restrictions eased, the first issue of Ebony included photography by Gordon Parks. Its opening editor editorial stated, Ebony will try to mirror, mirror the happier side of Negro life, the positive everyday achievements from Harlem to Hollywood. But when we talk about race as the number one problem of America, we'll talk turkey. In a short, short few years, Ebony became the most widely read black magazine in the world. It does. In June 1949, Johnson Publishing Company opened its own office building at 1820 South Michigan Avenue. Two months later, the grand opening celebration drew a host of celebrities, including Lena Horne and Duke Ellington. The same year, Johnson hired Doris Sanders to set up a company library, the first for any black magazine. A host of talented writers and editors also came on board. Among their work, Era Bell Thompson, Herbert Nipson, Vincent Tubbs, Roy Otley, Ed Clayton, Dan Burley. As the Chicago Renaissance drew to a close in 1951, Johnson launched another stunningly successful magazine, Jet Magazine. So, and oh, Senator Barack Obama's interview the importance of the Chicago Defender. Wow, Barbara Allen papers. So this is an interview with Senator Barack Obama before he became president. Isn't that amazing? And this is a copy of the Defender, 2008 presidential elections, President Barack Obama elected president of the United States. And here's a book that he wrote, The Promise, President Obama. Year one, Jonathan Alter. And Dreams from My Father, A Story of Race and Inheritance, Barack Obama. So they also have his papers here as well. 
is her farm, the Chicago Defender. So the Chicago Defender was not only in Chicago, but it was nationwide um, because I've, I've looked at articles and it'll, it'll have like special editions in other cities. So Vernon Jarrett, which one is Vernon Jarrett? Earned a bachelor's degree in history. So he, he came to work at the Chicago Defender. So he was a writer for the Chicago Defender. Um, he earned a Bachelor's of Arts degree in History from Knoxville College in 1941. And then this is Dewey Roscoe Jones. He was the editor of the Chicago Defender. And Defender Charities, they did fundraising. Oh, Madam C.J. Walker. College of Beauty Culture, so it was at 47th and South Parkway. They had uh, Madam C.J. Walker College of Beauty Culture. And so that's, uh, I guess they had a float in the Bud Billiken Parade. And Margaret Stewart Joyner, she was, uh, oh, she was the supervisor of 200 of Madam C.J. Walker Beauty Schools. Interesting. She had a close relationship with the Chicago Defender Charities. Uh, Timuel Black with friends from Burke School. So Timuel Black is uh, a Chicago historian, local Chicago historian. But this is about um, the migration and growing up in Chicago. <gasps> this is the Regal Theater which no longer exists, unfortunately. But the Regal Theater opened in February 1928, the most celebrated of clubs, dance halls, and theaters that dotted Bronzeville. The auditorium seated over 3,000 people. For more than 40 years, the Regal hosted the finest national black entertainment in music, theater, dance, cinema, and comedy. Oh my goodness, this is the last will and testament of Robert Abbott. And he was the uh, founder of the Chicago Defender N newspaper. So that's his will. Power to the black press. Convention starts today. National Newspaper Publishers Association, 1973. It was founded by John H. Sinistat during World War II, honored Chester Con Commodore as the best cartoonist several times. Oh, so this fist came from Commodore. He was a strong believer in the power of the press to influence American life. And this is John H. Sinistat. In 1934, Robert S. Ab Abbott, the founder of the Chicago Defender, brought his nephew, John H. Sinistat, to Chicago. Sinistat rapidly assumed key, key leadership roles at the paper. After Abbott's death in 1940, Sinistat took over as president and publisher until his own death in 1997. During those years, the Defender became the largest and most influential African-American newspaper, boasted prestigious columnists, and employed a staff of writers who went on to impressive careers. Oh, they had a magazine. I didn't know that. It's the first I've seen of this. Abbott Monthly Magazine, 1931. So that was the magazines. And that's Robert S. Abbott of the Chicago Defender. So this exhibit is about black journalism in Chicago. Let's see what else is over here. Oh, Robert S. Abbott with the uh, Defender Newspaper Boys. Oh, man. Okay, so these are Black Newspaper Index. America Diary. So this, this Vivian Harsh collection, she traveled 
as the first um, black librarian, she, th she traveled throughout the South collecting books, rare books, and she started the special Negro collection. And now today it is known as the Vivian Harsh Research Collection. And so people come searching for genealogy and they also come as well. Oh, there's more. And they also come um, to like produce movies, uh, write books. They come here to do their research. So this is the Bud Billiken Parade. And these are journal journalists. These are awards that they gave out. It's spectacular. So what's this over here? Clan or Gestapo, why take either? The foremost Negro author writes of devil, devils, hams, Dixie draws, and Axis dictators. The Chicago Defender calling America victory through unity. Wow. March on Washington. Leader sees danger of race losing the peace. It's amazing. So people come here to research that. Oh, this is Gordon Parks. Long before Commodore drew cartoon car character self-portraits, Gordon Parks was making photographs of himself. Also, he was doing selfies. So this is a selfie from 1941. And Dorothy Sanders. She wrote a food column and two social columns at the Chicago Defender. She wrote, oh, and she interviewed guests at the Lake Meadows restaurant and lot and lounge. Interesting. This is Ben Burns. He is a white editor in black journalism. Interesting. He was born August 25th, 1913. Um, died January 29, 2000. He helped found Ebony and other black publications. He trained many black writers in all aspects of print journalism. Who knew? That is interesting. And this is Charles A. Davis with Chicago was popping back then. It was. Charles A. Davis with Mayor Jane Byrne, 1979 to 1983. And let's see, what else is over here? So, boy, that is a, a powerful graphic. Supreme Court decision by Commodore, June 12, 1954. Chester Commodore's first cartoon, wow, as the Chicago Defender's editorial cartoonist was his hopeful expression that the Supreme Court decision in Brown versus Board of Education would break the manacles of America's segregated school. The cartoon has been reprinted in many books and journals and articles. And that's Chester Commodore. August 22nd, 1914 to April 10th, 2004. He is one of the most influential and acclaimed African-American cartoonists of the 20th century. He worked for nearly 50 years as the Defender editorial cartoonist. I was born in Chicago. I knew none of this history. Thank you for this call. Oh, you're welcome, Ann Shiley. You're welcome. Yeah, I'm reading stuff too. I mean, I was born here too, but hey, it's a lifelong journey of uh, learning black history. Shame of Mississippi. Wow. Look at that. Reverend George Lee, Lamar Smith, Little Emmett Teal. <gasps> oh my God, wow. Wow, Shame of Mississippi, cartoon by Commodore, September 10th, 1955. Lynch ruler. Man, this dog. Dr. T.R.M. 
this is a library. This is the Carter G. Woodson Library, Vivian Harsh Collection in Chicago. So Mississippi segregationist laws were civil rights group called a reign of terror against African Americans after the Supreme Court decision in Brown versus Board of Education. The KKK and other racist organizations murdered more than 20 Mississippians in 1954 and 1955. Among those killed were Reverend George Lee of Belzoni, Lamar Smith of Brookhaven, and 14-year-old Emmett Till, a Chicago child visiting Mississippi. Commodore's cartoon, drawn a week before the trial of Till's killers opened, shows civil rights leader Dr. T. R. M. Howard and Roy Wilkins advancing against lynch rulers. Oh, so they're hunting the lynch rulers. That's what they're doing. And the lynch ruler is running with his dog. Yeah, that is a powerful cartoon. Oh my God. You need, so this is a civil rights cartoon. That is phenomenal. And this is a, a selfie, Chester Commodore, cartoon self-portrait, 1978. So that's the editorial staff. So now I'll take you guys over here. I want to show you the artwork. Okay. So this library needs to be preserved because it is currently falling down and the state of Illinois is not funding the repairs of it. It is literally crumbling. This one is by Charles Sears. It's called The Tempest. That is beautiful. And that one's amazing, isn't it? We do have to preserve our history. I mean, this library is named in honor of Carter G. Woodson. It started in Chicago. Richard Hunt's Jacob's Ladder. Ah, oh, that's Jacob's Ladder by Richard Hunt. That's what that is. Jacob's Ladder. That's beautiful. Bernard Williams, Happy Barra. A gun go funny campaign. Oh, that's a great idea. I love that. Arabelle Thompson, journalist and author, 1906 to 1986. Horace R. Caton, sociologist and author, 1903 to 1970. Marjorie S. Joyner, entrepreneur, educator, 1896. I think she's the one that ran uh, the 22, Madam C.J. Walker. Schools that were located here in Chicago. And this one is the, uh, looks like a slave ship to me. Willie Cole Stowage, it is a slave ship. to where people go and do research here. Somebody tell me what time it is. Oh, he was in the way, I'm sorry. Ayoko Omano 
hope, hope in the community. Hi, how are you doing? That's good. Can you tell us how it works if you want to create like a white paper? Are you filming me right now? Yeah, I would prefer it if you would. Okay, thank you. How do you create white papers? Yes, for like the collections here. So when I when I came, yeah. I know. Okay, so you guys collect obituaries, right? Yep, that's the main things we collect. Is okay, the Patricia Wido researchers. Okay. Okay, so the obituaries are Patricia, Patricia Lydell Researchers mm -hmm. Library. Yeah, that's a genealogy group that started in Chicago. They're very active. They meet here once a month. Okay. And so we have their archive, and it's grown into uh, people send us funeral programs from all over the United States. Okay, so you guys hear that? You can send funeral programs from all over the United States. And so do they address it to the Vivian Hodge collection if they want to do that? Absolutely. Okay, and then what happens to the um, obituaries? Um, there are funeral programs. Not funeral pro programs, excuse and me, funeral programs. Is, um, they come to our senior archivist, Ms. Beverly Cook, and she looks at them and she has created a spreadsheet. And we enter them into the spreadsheet if they're not already there based on the person's name, where they were born or passed away, and their date. Okay. And we add them into um, by last name boxes in the back, archival manuscript boxes. And okay. Right now we have over 10,000. They have over 10,000 uh, funeral programs from all over the U.S. that are archived here. Are you filming for your own personal use or is it for a website? It's, it's for a group. It's for a group. Oh, wonderful. It's yeah. Group. It's for um, World Black History on Periscope. So I'm sharing with, because a lot of people don't know that this library is here or the collection is here. Oh, absolutely. So. Well, on that table over there, we have a fact sheet oh, about where? the Harsh Research Collection. Oh, I can show you. Okay. Okay. And then on March 26th, Saturday, I know it's the day before Easter, okay. but we have a number of programs. <clears throat> okay. Including, I'm giving a tour, behind the scenes tour. Oh, of okay. The, of the archive, and I'll be talking about the person who started it, the first African American library in the Chicago Public Library System, Fantastic. and the first uh, manager of one of the branches, and then uh, also three of the collections that we hold. Oh, three fantastic. <laughs> okay. That same day, we also have a speaker coming in, and he wrote a book about the Chicago Defender, which is celebrating 111 years, and that's why we have the exhibit oh. up. Although the exhibit isn't finished, we're going to be adding a little bit more to it. We just wanted to get something up in that space. For it's a beautiful to exhibit. And so he'll Wonderful. Be and he's speaking at 2 o'clock. Fantastic. And the Patricia Lido researchers, the group I was telling you about, yeah. they're doing a free genealogy worksheet, uh, workshop on how to create a family DVD based off of the research that you do. Okay. So they're meeting also, I think, at 3 o'clock. Well, we have flyers for those on that table. Okay. But here's um, <coughs> okay. a little bit about our oh, collection. Okay, fantastic. Yeah. 70,000 books, 500 periodical titles, 75 microfilm research collections, 7,000 reels. Yeah. Wow. And you can view all of the... Original okay. manuscripts by Richard Wright, Langston Hughes, and Arna Bonto. So this is our main web page, okay. shypublib.org, okay. C-H-I-P-V-L-I-B.org. Okay. And if you go to Browse, uh, Archival Collection, okay. and this will give you a full list, <clears throat> and you can search either by subject or by A to Z. All the ones that are housed here at the Vivian Harsh are African American related, okay. so you can search there. Because there are four other archival repositories under the Chicago Public Library umbrella. Harold Washington, Sulzer on the north side, us, and then Municipal Research Collections at okay. Harold Washington. Okay. So you want to make sure that you see Woodson Regional Library at Vivian Harsh. Okay. And so these are all of our collections. Okay. And including, like I mentioned, we have the Abbott and Sack Family Papers, who started the Chicago Defender. Yes. And then some of the other, we have a very big uh, genealogical and historical society, Chicago Archives, in addition to the PLR. Okay. And what you want to do is you want to click on the Finding Aid link. And 
that'll show you what's in every box, every folder before you visit. Wow. And so wow. this is um, one finding aid about the Barbara Allen papers. Okay. So you can see it gives some biographical information about her. And then here's the actual container list, what's in every box, every folder before you visit. Wonderful. Because when you visit, we want to ask, we're going to ask you which collection and which box of the collections you want to view. Okay. And, then go into the room. and that's where you can actually view the archival material. Oh, fantastic. Okay. The one thing you'll want to note is that the manuscript reading room does have different hours than the library. Okay. We always open an hour after the library and close an hour before, so we can pull boxes and then put them away. Okay. Wonderful. So I'll let you look at this, and if you have any other questions, just okay. let me know. All right, thank you. Oh, That's no very informative. Thank you. Also, I do want to let you know one thing is that if you uh, if you photograph or if you um, go ahead and record any painter, you just have to get their okay before you before you. Do oh, okay. That. No, but I'm trying. I try not to do people. Oh, no problem. Yeah. All right. I'll do the desk if you have any questions. Uh -huh. okay. okay, you guys. So over here, they have um, Malcolm X. If you could see it, Carter G. Woodson, Legacy of Love, and this is in honor of Mary Jane Floyd Bethune. And that's about the sculpture in the middle. So they have Richard Wright's um, books here. So these are all these collections. No, he wasn't from Chicago. He wasn't. He came to Chicago. I believe he was born in Virginia. He came to Chicago to do a, um, a demo for three weeks. And then he and his friends started uh, Negro History Week. It came out of a three week demo of um, Negro life. And then they decided to start they found it Negro History Week here in Chicago, though. And so that's Carter G. Woodson. Oh, I have a good shot. So that's Carter G. Woodson right there. But I'll go out and I'll show you all the, uh, the display over here about Carter G. Woodson. I showed this when we first came in. So. A Life in Black History by Carter G. Woodson. And this is the um, the study of Negro life and history. Oh, the Association for the Study of Negro Life and History, ASNLH in 1935. And uh, so they came to Chicago. And that's why it was founded in Chicago. So this is the annual report. They're now located in Washington, D.C. So this report is from 1925 to 1926. This is the miseducation of the Negro. These are quotations. Any found in... Uh, Probably not, because Carter G. Woodson was born in 1875. He died in 1950, so I don't think any founding members are still alive. I would highly doubt that. So September 9, 1915, the Association for the Study of Negro Life and History. That's when it was founded, so I doubt, I doubt if they're alive. I really do. Carter G. Woodson, father of African American history. And then the crisis. No, the organization didn't end. The organization is in Washington, D.C. It still goes on. They're still the founders of Black History Month. Nobody ever talks about them. You never, um, I'll have to show you guys the website. But no, no, the organization lives on. Yeah, yeah. So if you, the website, okay, so the website name is ASNLH. If you go and Google it, it'll come up. Yeah, they, they still exist. 
they still exist. So Google the Association for the Study of Negro Life and History. A, no, A, S, L, N, A, S, N, L, H, A, S, N, L, H. Here it is. There it is. Yeah, A S N L H. That's the name of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the name of the organization. They're in Washington, D.C. That's where they're located. But th this is the, the committee, the founding committee right here. So it's interesting because it was founded by um, Frat Brothers. So he was an Omega. Carter G. Woodson was an Omega. And it was the fraternities that um, the Black Frat Brothers, they're the ones that got Negro History Week up and running and promoted it. And that's, that's not ever talked about. So it was the Frat Brothers. Show you guys over here. Oh, it looks like they're trying to do something to the library, but we need to. Um, so this is a rendering, I guess, of what it will look like, because they do need to make it look better. This is the renovation for the building. But they definitely need to put money into it. So I'm going to show you the uh, children's department. It's phenomenal. I lived at this library when I was in Chicago. I love this place. It's like one of my favorites. So I definitely want to see it continue. I don't want to see it fall down. These are all children's books. I never heard of these. Emma Manley, she loved baseball. Wow. Jack Robinson. Jack Johnson. Jay Willis. Sandra Page. Tennis Way, Venus and Serena Williams. The Rock. Wilma Rudolph. Thank you. Oh, this is beautiful. <laughs> Books come in all colors. So they have up here Langston Hughes, Augustus Savage, James Vandersee. So this is their African American heritage section. And you see that it is March and they're still celebrating African American history, which is awesome. UB Blake, Duke Ellington, Bill Bojangles. So, I mean, this is, and look at the walls, red, green. I mean, this is truly, it's beautiful. And over there, that wall is black. The far wall over there where the children's play section is black. So, uh, so this, I'm going to show you guys the children's play section. It's a beautiful library. It needs to be preserved. And this wall over here. It, oh no. It's kind of blue, I guess. So, red and green. And then they have a play section for children. It's a beautiful, beautiful library. So, I want to thank you guys for joining. Please do um, share this out and make sure others know that we need to walk. Uh, save this library and uh, so 
Black History Week, Black History Month started in Chicago. And this is a phenomenal library. Oh, there's a painting of Carter <coughs> I'm going to close out the scope. I'm going to close out the scope on a picture of Carter G. Woodson. So, make sure, if you guys are new to me, please, please swipe the little Perry dude and, and follow me. My name is Janice Temple, and I'm the founder of World Black History. Please join us on, on our Facebook group. And so, I'm going to turn this. I think I'm going to do this book. So thanks for joining the scope, you guys. Thanks for hearting it up. I do appreciate each and every one of you. Make sure you join our Facebook group.